You know what they say about the auto industry. If you ain't first, you're last. The number two automaker globally has had its shares of downs in recent years. It's huge in Europe where the auto market has become stagnant and very crowded. China was once their golden goose, not anymore. And in America, they just haven't gotten the sales traction they wanted. The all electric ID4 has had some good sales months. We'll see if the ID buzz can get Americans excited about minivans again. In 2021, Volkswagen announced Project Trinity, its next generation battery electric platform that would incorporate all the latest EV hardware, advanced batteries, software, driving automation, and cost savings into one platform. Originally scheduled to launch next year, it has been postponed at least five years for a number of reasons. Chinese EV makers are innovating faster than imagined, so they have partnered with Xpeng to catch up. Volkswagen's carryout software group did not deliver on its promises, and thus they formed a relationship with Rivian to use their software platform. For the small, affordable battery EVs that they need for Europe, Volkswagen has given us a peek. Let's take a look at what we know and connect the dots to their software, battery, and China EV strategies to understand what we should expect. As mentioned, Project Trinity is delayed. You can forget about it for now. The Volkswagen Xpong partnership is on the hook for two vehicles. We are told that it will specifically be for the China market, not global vehicles. This presentation is from last year, but it's still valid. Their small BEV family of EVs is going to come off a simplified version of their modular electric drive platform, MEB Entry. Thus far, only front-wheel drive powertrains have been announced, and I would not expect all-wheel drive. If you want to keep it affordable and try to achieve profitability, compromises have to be made. Just how much they improve their MEB platform is unknown. They certainly have been learning from the competition in China. They just launched an updated ID3 in China with a lower starting price, larger display, and more affordable LFP battery on the base model. We likely won't get these BEVs in America. They're too small, A and B segment vehicles. The ID Everyone is the smallest. It's a clever name, but it may just be called ID One in production. Exterior styling is very Volkswagen, clean, tight body to wheel. I, I like it, but some of you may consider it boring. It is a concept, but I would expect the production EV to launch very close to what you're seeing here in 2027 with a starting price very close to 20,000 euro. That's the key spec. I'll go over it more, but it's all about price. If you want a bigger, more powerful all-wheel drive EV, then you're going to have to buy a bigger Volkswagen. Size is similar to the BYD Seagull, which is not yet sold in Europe, but they do sell them in Asia, Mexico, and South America. It's very, very small and yet a little longer than the two-door Fiat. Specs for the Fiat are the standard Europe model. We only get the long-range battery in America. It's a city car, not a lot of power, not a high top speed, not a long range. But in Europe and many other parts of the world, it's sufficient for most customers. The inside, like the exterior, is clean and stylish. Much of this concept could reach production. It's functional and affordable with a small driver display and a good size, but not ridiculously huge center display. Lots of hard plastics would save on cost. Production of this and the other MEB entry vehicles is said to be in Spain. Other vehicles like the Volkswagen ID2 All, which was shown in 2023 as a five-door hatch, and a sporty all-electric GTI model. Think of this as a modern all-electric VW Polo. Expected in 2026, it's shorter than the Volvo EX30. For 25,000 euro, you get more size, more range, and more power. Faster charging, still only front-wheel drive. We don't know all the details, but expect this sweet-looking GTI model to have even more power, faster acceleration, and classic VW hot hatch looks inside and out. 
All wheel drive, in my opinion, is unlikely. A two all SUV or ID2 Cross, maybe that's what they call it, would benefit from all wheel drive, but it's a soft rotor, so I assume they can do without it. No indication that they will make MEB into a multi energy platform to accommodate battery electric, plug in hybrid, hybrid, or gas powertrains. If they want to minimize the cost and investment on this existing platform, it would be best to focus on one powertrain and eliminate everything else. These MEB entry vehicles will offer a new powerful software architecture that enables lifelong updates and upgrades of the production model. In other words, Volkswagen retimed these BEVs to incorporate the Rivian software architecture that they spent billions to gain access to. And to be clear, it is not just a reskin of Rivian's UX design. Volkswagen's own designers will determine what it looks like to the driver, but underneath it's a common software architecture and shared electrical architecture that it runs on. This is good. Owners don't care about the nerdy details for how it works. They just want it to look great, operate quickly, and be upgradable over the air. That's the promise that Rivian's joint venture with Volkswagen promises, and I'm excited about the potential. Volkswagen is developing its own unified cell for use across all their brands. Unified because they are currently using a variety of cell formats and chemistries in their current EVs. The new strategy falls under the name PowerCo. They have a plant in Germany taking lead with a second European plant coming online next year in Spain, same country as the MEB entry models. The PowerCo cells will all be a prismatic format in one of three chemistries premium nickel manganese cobalt or NMC for their upscale EVs, mainstream batteries that will use a different chemistry than NMC, and lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries, which would be a great way to reduce costs for these MEB entry models. I'm a little concerned that they'll be able to launch their own batteries smoothly. Yeah, I hope they do, but this would be a huge confidence boost for Volkswagen if they can pull it off and position them very well for success in the future. IAA Mobility this year is in Germany. Perhaps we'll see the final production version of the ID2 All and get some more specifications. It's doubtful that either of these BEVs will be offered in America. It's also doubtful that they'll be offered in China. The competition there is just so extreme that an entry level EV like this would probably struggle to compete. I like the looks, but sadly, we probably won't get them here, either as a Volkswagen or as a Skoda. Let me know your thoughts, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.